Hi, teacher. Hey, hello, Mr. Marley. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Uh, remember this session, the objective for this session is to give personal assistance if you have any question or about any topic that we have studied or any question in general that I can help you with. So I'm all ears. Right? I listen to you and I try to give you some assistance on this. Okay. And I have two and saying no, some words. Tell me. What say correctly? Mm -hmm. Centimet centimeters. 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 Meters, like with R, right? Centimeters. We are. We are mm -hmm. Remember that in, in the American, uh, let's see, let me show on this one. Let me see, give me a second. I will share something with you. Remember that in this one, centimeters, right? Sometimes the letter T, let me, let me make it a little bit bigger for you, right? Uh, in this case, the letter T, in many cases in the American language, when it is uh, between two vowel sounds, it sounds like an I, like an R, similar to city, similar to this one, city, right? Uh, that is the American accent in this one. Cuando tenemos a veces la letra T eh, rodeada, o acompañada de dos vocales, uh, antes y después, generalmente en el idioma inglés, eh, la letra T suena como una R, right? centimeters, y ahí es una de las diferencias con el, el acento británico, el acento británico utiliza centimeters, city, right? similar to say, when you say water, oh, sorry, when, uh -huh. you say, when you say water, sorry, you know, and in British, you say water, water, right? That is a little bit of, a, of the emphasis that we have there. Uh, water is currently. In this case, water. Yeah, that is the American, the American accent. You go for that centimeters, city, water, right? That is, that is the best option for American accent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the... Other word is ah. period. Ah, period, uh -huh. With the explanation that I, that I mentioned. Period. Okay, period. Mm -hmm. You mentioned like that. Okay. Remember that period is for punctuation, right? El period lo utilizamos para puntuación en el caso de caligrafía. Usted dice mm -hmm. period. Si estamos hablando de de cifras, en este caso de números, you mentioned point. point. Exactly. You mentioned e, point. And next word. And so the okay. other is for in the electronical environment, let's say. For example, you say that. Like www that, right? Inglés corporativo. Inglés, that, com. Right? Ahí yeah. utilizamos that. Cuando lo utilizamos el, el point, aquí es en puntuación. I am happy. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. My, my bad. Sorry, aquí. In this one. I am happy, period. Mm -hmm. And in this one, uh, I made an exam. I got 9.8. Right? That is my... Okay. my Calificaciones or así. Hello, uh, sorry for this one. Hey, Miss Noemi, hello, hello, hello. How can I help you? ¿Cómo puedo ayudarle, Noemi? Veo por ahí que algunos me dijeron que podían ceder el tiempo. Ya vi por ahí algunos compañeros. Así que no importa, no hay problema. Yo puedo ayudarle. Dígame, Noemi. Tiene apagado el micrófono. The microphone, Miss Noemi. I cannot hear you. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> my my third ten 
past ten. Yeah, I know. Tell me, how can I help you? ¿Cómo puedo ayudarle? Dígame si tiene alguna duda de lo que hemos estado conversando en las videoconferencias, puedo asistirle. Pues es en esto último, en Chennai, uh -huh. donde todavía me quedó un poco de duda uh -huh. en el de information. En el de information. Uh -huh. es, es siempre when, can I, cómo puedo, qué puedo hacer o dónde uh -huh. puedo, es uh -huh. eso. Es. Pero lo puedo hacer, sí, no solo en, en primera persona, sino en segunda, en tercera. Exacto. Ahí puede variar dependiendo a quién se está refiriendo. Right? Lo más común que estábamos viendo en eso, when, can I, recuérdese que acá el the WH question can change depending on the context or depending on the information, right? Ahí la WH word puede cambiar dependiendo del contexto. Pero acá nada más, si se recuerdan en la tablita que les mostré, ahí estaba el formato de a seguir, ¿verdad? Con las, mm -hmm. con las, w, uh, con las yes no question o con la WH question. En este caso yo podría muy fácilmente cambiar el sujeto. Right? Voy a hacer la oración completa para que lo veamos mejor lo visualicemos mejor, right? O, o dígame usted, o ar, ármeme una pregunta con when can I, e incluyeme el complemento y yo le voy a dar otro ejemplo a partir de eso. When can I, when can I sleep in the sofa? Okay. In the sofa, right? That is a personal question. ¿Cuándo puedo sentarme? Tal vez ahí alguien ha pasado todo el día y usted quiere sentarse en el sillón. <ríe> y se dice, when can I sit in the sofa? Right? Pero ahí está haciendo una, una, una pregunta eh, con información, pero personal, refiriéndose a usted, ¿verdad? ¿Cuándo puedo yo? Right? Pero mm. es probable, imagínese acá, yo puedo cambiarla, when can, can, y aquí yo puedo variar en este espacio, yo puedo decir, when can she, when can he, when can they, sit in the sofa. Ahí, acá en este espacio, según el, el, lo que estábamos viendo del modelo de la pregunta, ahí uh -huh. nosotros pudiéramos cambiar el sujeto de independientemente o, o a quién hacemos referencia. ¿okay? Y recuérdese que lo que hablábamos en la sesión anterior, cada vez que tenemos un auxiliar, el siguiente verbo, aun cuando sea tercera persona, no va a variar. Por eso es que en este uh -huh. caso, en este caso, lo voy a quitar acá. Si dijéramos she, y usted me dice, pero she es tercera persona, teacher. Y entonces acá le tengo que poner S porque es tercera persona. Podría ser una opción válida, ¿verdad? Pero en este caso, recuérdese que todo uh -huh. auxiliar, todos los auxiliares nos van a eliminar el uh -huh. cambio en el presente de tercera persona. Entonces nada más ahí lo que hacemos es que eliminamos la letra, la conjugación prácticamente del verbo. When can she sit in the sofa? All right. Y ahí, como le menciono, en la posición acá del sujeto, el sujeto puede variar dependiendo de, lo, de a quién usted quiera referirse. Uh -huh. ¿Mm? Teacher. Okay. Tell me. Uh, so, when can I take me vacation? Uh, when can I take my vacation? It's possible, right? Cuando puedo tomar mis vacaciones, así de gale al jefe. Ah, está bueno. Hey, boss. <laughs> hey, boss. <laughs> ya le dije. I say. <laughs> excellent, excellent. You say, hey, boss, when can I take my vacation? Come on. Right, because you're asking. Uh, I have. Uh, <laughs> ¿Cómo sería? Me las me me voy de vacaciones. I am I'm going on vacation. I go on vacation um, first uh, April. April first. April first. Oh, interesting. That's really nice. But that is possible, right? When night time take my vacations, right? Porque ahí partimos del hecho que ya sabemos que algo es posible. Entonces ahí solo queremos averiguar la información, right? Si usted, mm. si yo formo a partir del ejemplo que Marvin nos dijo, si yo formo la pregunta, can I take my vacation? La diferencia es que ahí yo quiero averiguar si es posible. O sea, no sé si me van a dar vacaciones, ¿va? 
puedo tomar mis vacaciones. Tal vez me van a decir, no, uh -huh. usted puede tomar vacaciones ¿va? por A o B motivo. ¿Vale? Yo quiero averiguar. En este caso, por eso hacíamos la diferencia entre utilizar el can para possibility. Can I take my vacation? Or in the other, in, the, in this one with the WH word, you already know the information. Usted en este contexto ya sabe que algo es posible. No está averiguando, hey, es posible, sino que cuando. Usted ya sabe que tiene derecho a sus vacaciones, nada más quiere saber. Exactly. Usted solo quiere saber cuándo. Esa es una de las diferencias también cuando utilizamos WH Word, que eh, buscamos información en el supuesto que nosotros ya sabemos que algo es posible. Si no sabemos, usted dice, hey, teacher, can I... Can I Can I come, can I connect to the, to the video conference early? Y me puedo conectar antes. Usted no, está, usted no sabe si es posible. ¿va? Y yo le digo, ah, sí, me conecté a las 5 de la tarde. No problem. Aunque right? <laughs> no haya nadie. <laughs> ah, that is the option. <laughs> Nobody's going to be there, but it's possible, right? Y es posible. <laughs> usted puede unirse. No le prometo sí. que esté yo ahí. Pero es posible, right? Ahí está All preguntando, right. pues, si algo es posible. Y la siguiente, pues, sería, ¿a ¿cuándo? Ya sabiendo que algo sí es posible, ya usted le agrega la WH Word correspondiente. Okay. Uh -huh. ¿Cuál sería, cuál sería la, la oración correcta para decir, a mí ya me pasó? Uh, a mí ya me pasó, you say, it oh. happened. Ahí nos vamos al pasado. It happened to me. Right? It happened to me. O sea, a mí me ocurrió. Uh -huh. It happened to me. <laughs> ok. <laughs> Miss Noemi, any other question? Mm, no. Not at this moment. All right? No. no. Thank you, teacher. Welcome. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. okay. Solo copy. Problem, no problem. You can, you can copy, you can take screenshots. Ahí lo que más le convenga. Si puede copiar, tomar captura de pantalla. Ya me fijé que algunos toman captura de pantalla cuando estamos ahí, porque cuando entro en los break rooms, ahí me veo congelado. Yo de repente así siempre aparezco con un texto <risa> bien bonito, generalmente. Sí, ahí, ahí lo tengo en varias. Hombre, que avisen, me decía, sonrío, yo así, o something like that. I, 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 I can have a, a happy face for that one. <risa> Al natural es mejor. Yeah, yeah, the, the natural beauty. <risa> yeah. <risa> No problem. Uh, tell me more questions. Mm -hmm. Many more. No, teacher. Thank no. you. All right. It's no problem. Me. No problem. All right. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Good okay. night. See you later. Night. Okay. See you tomorrow. Good Have night. A tomorrow. Espero que tenga un feliz día mañana. Y nos vemos. See you. See you. See you.
All right, let's see. Uh, for today, we are going to make a review about the contents that we were checking in the class. And uh, as you know, it's very important that we have a clear understanding about the topic. We were talking about can, can for information and for possibility. That was the objective for today's class. Uh, we were checking on WH questions as a review. Yeah, because when we talk about can for information, it is important to make a connection with previous knowledge. As in this one, in the WH questions, we have some of them here in, in this uh, presentation on this slide. We have what, when, why, who, where, and how. Remember that these words ask for a spe specific information. For example, what asks for a thing or an object, when asks for time, why asks for reason, who asks for a person, where asks for a place, and finally, right, how asks for a form to do something, right? It is important to keep in mind this one because it's a combination of previous structures plus the one we're checking on today's class. As you can see, we go over the, the pattern that is necessary for this, uh, for this structure, and the pattern goes in this way. The first element that we need is a WH word. Remember the previous one? What, when, why, who, where, or how? In this case, the first element, WH word, after the WH word, we have the auxiliary. In this case, because of the emphasis of the class is to use can, so the next word is going to be the auxiliary can. After the auxiliary, we go over the subject. And after the subject, we have the main verb. And finally, we have the complement. Remember, it is important to use a question mark at the end. In the English language, if we form a question, we need to include the question mark at the end. That is very important, so please, don't forget, check on my example, right? When can I receive personal assistance? The first element, WH word, when. Auxiliary, can, subject, I, verb, receive, and the complement, personal assistant. Finally, a question mark. Then we have different WH words from the one when, where, who, how, and what. In this case, we can vary the WH word. For example, where? Where can I receive personal assistance? And the possible answer, I can tell you, hey, you can go to the academy and I can help you, right? I can give you personal assistance. I change the WH word and continue with the same format. Who, uh, who can give me personal assistance? Asking for a person. And I tell you, hey, the teacher. The teacher can give you personal assistance. Then on the other, how? How can I receive personal assistance? And the answer, uh, you can receive personal assistance if you call, right? Call, and then you're going to receive personal assistance. Remember that how asks about a form to do something. And in the next one, we go for what? Something for asking for an object, right? What can I do, right? What can I do to receive personal assistance? Ah, you need to enroll in the course. And then you receive personal assistance. See, that's why it is important to make a connection with WH words because they go for information questions. And then we include the auxiliary can to ask for information. We can use can to talk about possibility. And in this one, for possibility, we go for just no questions. And check on this one. For just no questions, we go over uh, the format and the element, the sentence elements that are necessary for this. And in this one, the just no questions is the format is auxiliary plus subject plus the verb plus the complement. And remember, finally, we have the question mark. 
check on my example. Just no questions with Ken to ask for if something is possible. Can you help me with more examples, right? That is for me. Can you do the homework with me, right? Can you, talking about if it is possible, can you speak Spanish in the class? And I tell you, uh, I'm sorry, it is not possible, right? Because you're talking about possibility on this part, right? Let's see. Let me go over more examples on this one. I will check on this one, check on this. Remember the elements uh, for WH questions and for yes no question. And as previous, somebody was asking me, is it possible to include other subject, not just like, when can I? And it is possible. It is possible to include this one. You can say, where can, where can you, right? Depending on the person. Uh, also, you can say, how can she, right? There is no problem. Let's complete this one with more compliments. When can I do the homework? In this one, you know it is possible to do the homework, let's say in the platform, to be more specific, right? When can I do the, the homework in the platform? Because you know it is possible. Usually, if we are in a conversation with any person and we want to use these two model questions in context, usually, right? It is not like, it's 100%, but usually you begin with a just no question. Why? Because when you want to know something, first, it is important to ask if something is possible, right? It is not okay to ask like, when can I do the homework? And you say, ah, do I have homework? Now, first, you go for asking for possibility. Right. The first, uh, the first uh, common question is, when can I do the homework? Let's say. Right. This should be the first question, because at first, when we don't have any background information. The first, you need to ask if something is possible, right? Because probably you have the workbook or something like that, and you are used to doing the homework in, on paper, right? But first you say, hey, can I do the homework in the platform? You are asking if it is something possible, right? Imagine this is the student. Imagine this situation. Say, the student asks me, I would switch the color, right? The student asks, can, uh, can I do the homework in the platform? The person is asking for possibility. Then in the same situation, I have the teacher and the teacher probably is going to confirm or deny the information, right? In this one, I have two possible. I can tell you like, yes, you can do, let's see. Yes, you can do the homework in the platform. You have the confirmation that something is possible. That is, as you can see, this should be like the common order to use these questions in context. First, you ask, oh, sorry. First, you ask for possibility. And after that, you ask, uh, then you have some information. And after that, you can ask for extra information. Let's continue with, with this idea in context. The student, can I do the homework in the platform? Talking about, you're asking in this case, if something is possible. And that is the idea for possibility. Let's see. 
you're asking if something is possible. In the teacher's part, you have the confirmation. Yes, you can do the homework in the platform. After the student, in this case, after the student knows the information or has a confirmation about what he's talking about, after that one, you can follow up WH questions. For example, can I do the homework? Yes, it is possible. I can say, when can I do the homework? First, I know it is possible. Now I am asking extra information. As in this case, when can I do the homework? And as you remember, we have a WH word. In this case, when asks for time, right? And then the possible answer, teacher, ah, the teacher probably is going to answer, you can do, sorry, you can do the homework uh, next week, I say. You go over this one. You can do the homework next week. Let me make it, let's see, give me a second. I will try to make it smaller so it is in on one page. All right. Then uh, after this, after this information, when can I do the homework? The teacher may answer, "Hey, you can do the homework next week." Talking about time. Ah, but then the student has other question, right? And then the person, probably the student doesn't know how to do it. And then the person is, the, the student asks, how can I do the homework? How can I do the, the homework in the platform? Remember that what are you seeing or we're implementing a different WH question for this part. Let me see. Sorry. This should be in red. So continue with the same order. All right. Then imagine the person goes like this, like, how can I do the homework? How can I do the homework in the platform? The person is asking for instructions. As remember how, ask, asks for a form to do something. In this case, the teacher probably is going to provide the information. You can do the homework. In the platform. I log in, in and click in in the home in the homework section just to give you an example, right? And then the teacher is giving some information. How can I do the homework? Remember how that is a is other wh we're asking for a form to do something how can i do the homework in the platform uh, you can do the homework in the platform by logging in and clicking in the homework section but then the student comes with other question Fine. and then Probably he's asking uh, information about how can he do something, but probably he wants to ask information, right? Imagine this student has a sister, right? And then he wants to know because they study in the same place. Let's imagine that one. They study in the same place. And then he wants to ask information about the sister, but always using WH word and can for information, right? How can my sister be part of the course? Let's see, this is in red, right? 
right? How can my sister be part of the course? Remember that in this one, we continue using a WH word. And remember that when we have an auxiliary, in this case, can, can is going to eliminate all changes in the verb. The verb goes in the base form. That's why in this part, because you say, hey, my sister, the verb to be for my sister, we use is, right? My sister is, yeah. But in this way, remember, every time we have an auxiliary, the verb returns to the base form. So in this case, you say, how can my sister be? Be is the base form of the verb to be, right? No conjugation. How can my sister be part of the course? And then the teacher, you know, the teacher says, she can uh, go, let's see, the, the, the school principal. You see? Then, how can my sister be part of the course? She can call the school principal. Right, and the person is providing information using can for information. She can call the school principal. Ah, now the student has some information, and as you can, as uh, and as you are going to see here, we can interchange or incorporate yes no questions and wh questions with can. Then after the person knows, hey, she can call the school principal, and then the person says, let's see. Uh, when <clears throat> when can she call the principal? Let's say when and remember when can she call the principal? All right, and then the person provides more information. Let's see the picture. She can call at 2 p.m. Just to give you an example about the time. Okay, the person is providing, sorry, the person is providing information about what, right? About when can she call? And then the student remembers, right? Hey, my sister doesn't have a cell phone, right? In that case, the person is in trouble. So he wants to know more information. Uh, then I express, she, let's see, I go, my sister doesn't have a cell phone. Can she come to school? <clears throat> then you continue like that, right? My sister doesn't have a cell phone, right? Can she come to school to talk to the principal? Now the student is asking if something is possible. Can she come to school to talk to the principal? And then the teacher goes, oh, no. Mm. I'm sorry but the principal is busy at that time. Now you say, mm, I'm sorry, but the principal, but the principal is busy at that time, right? The person is saying, hey, it is not possible. Right? It's not possible to talk to the principal. But you know, the student wants the sister to be part of the course. For that reason, then he asks, uh, who can she talk to instead? In this case, the person is using a WH word because the person knows the information, the principal is not available at that time. 
So you see, he, the person goes like, who can she talk to instead, right? The person wants to know other person that is responsible, responsible, the, and that the person may help the sister. And the person says, who can she talk to? And the teacher says, oh, all right, because you know, the person is asking uh, for a responsible person in this case. You can say, your sister can talk to me. In this case, see how we can play with the, the structure, right? Who can she talk to instead? You say, hey, your sister can talk to me, right? That is a possibility. And the person, well, not a possibility, but it's possible, but the person is providing some information. Your sister can talk to me, right? That is a possibility. And, and, as, sorry, and as you can see, these are the different ways to be implementing the use of can to ask for information and also the use of can to talk about possibility. Right? Those are the two different forms. And you can play with the language and you can, um, usually, as I told you, you may start with a yes no question to, to, to know if something is possible. And after that, you can include uh, WH questions to know more information about something, right? Something that you may know. Also, Let's go over other topic. We were talking about responsibilities. And for responsibilities, we were talking about have to. We were talking about have to. In this case, remember you go for subject. In this case, the verb but the verb is going to be have to plus a base form of other verb. Let's see, let me do this smaller. So probably it's visually uh, more appealing. And then plus complement in this case. Right? This is applicable when we have subjects I, let's see, let me go over here. When you have subjects like I, you, we, and they. For example, that is applicable for this one. Sorry. For example, talking about your responsibilities at work, probably. We have to be early at work. See, I have to be early at work. Why do we need other base form? Because in that case, you talk about something that is an obligation, right? Because we refer to an action. If you say, hey, teacher, I have a cat, you are using have, but it is not a responsibility. In this context, you are talking about possession. I have a cat, I have a dog, I have, let's see, um, two tele televisions at home. In this case, it's possession, not something like an obligation. That's why you need have to plus other base form. In that case, you talk about responsibilities. For example, um, you have to participate in class. That is one of the responsibilities, one of the obligations as a student uh, to participate. You have to participate in class. Let's see on the other. We. We have to, and after that one, remember if we need a base form, we have to, let's see, learn more of vocab, 
vocabulary, right? Vocabulary. We have to learn more vocabulary. That is one of the obligations as students. And if we talk about people, say they, talking about, let's see, people at work, just to give you an example. They have to finish the report, giving you extra explanation, right? They have to finish the report. When we talk about the third person singular, in this case, we have he, she, and it. The verb, the principal verb is going to change a little bit, right? But most of the structure is man maintained. For example, you go for a subject. In this case, as you know, he, she, it. Plus um, the verb. In this case, the verb is going to be has, sorry, has to, plus a base form of a verb. Plus a complement. That is the structure for this. And let me go to the other page, like that. Mm -hmm. And then you talk, let's use names, not pronouns, right? And I say Julia. Julia has to send emails, right? And that is a responsibility. And we're using the verb have according to the third person singular. Julia has to send emails. What about the next one? Let's see Ernesto, I will use Ernesto. Ernesto has to supervise. Right? Ernesto has to supervise production. Remember, we're using has to because in this one, it's similar as if you say he, right? It's a substitution, right? So you need to make that analysis, oh, sorry. So it is valid to make that analysis in your mind. You say, Ernesto, Think about the possible pronoun, he. He is a third person singular. And you say, hey, yes, Ernesto has to. But in the sentence, it is not possible to say Ernesto, he. Ernesto, he has to. Mm -mm, not possible. You say Ernesto has to. Or you may say Ernest, or, or you say he has to supervise production. So don't get confused, right? I included he as a reference but it's not possible to say Ernesto, he has to, mm -mm, not possible. And then talking about here, uh, talking about this one, it. Let's think about an element for it. Mm -hmm. The cat has to be at home all the time, right? The cat has to be at home all the time. And if you think about the, the prana and the reference for the prana, in this case, we go for it, right? Because it is for objects or it is for animals. As in this one, the cat has to be at home all the time, or you may say it has to be at home all the time. But as I told you before, and as we checked on this one, it is not possible to say the cat, it has to, mm -mm, not possible. You say, the cat has to be at home all the time. Going over the negatives, oh, sorry. Going over the negatives for this one, you go like this. Uh, the negative for this one is don't, right? And in this one, we include the particle don't at this part. Don't have to say subject, the verb, and in the big verb, we have don't, have to, and the base form of other verb. That means that in this one, you say, I have to be early at work. I don't. And you make the negative. I don't have to be early at work. What about this one? You have to participate in class? 
you don't have to participate in class, right? Uh, that is just an example, but you have to participate. We have to learn more vocabulary. We don't have to learn more vocabulary. They have to finish the report. And in the negative, they don't have to finish the report. That is how you make the negative. Going over uh, the third person singular, he, she, it. Something is going to happen. Remember the auxiliary for the third person singular in this case is, uh, is doesn't, right? He, she, it, the negative auxiliary doesn't. And if we are using the auxiliary, remember, as I mentioned before, every time there is an auxiliary, the auxiliary is going to eliminate the change to the next verb. So in the simple present, and for a third person singular, it is not possible to say doesn't has to, it's not possible. In this case, we are return has to the base form. And what is the base form? Have. In this case, let's check on, on the changes. Julia has to send emails, that is the affirmative. But for the negative, oops, what happened here? But for the negative, we are going to use doesn't. You say Julia doesn't, doesn't has. Uh -uh, you, you made a change. Julia doesn't have to, right? Doesn't have to send emails. We return the verb to the base form. Ernesto has to supervise. Third person singular, Ernesto doesn't have to, sorry, Ernesto doesn't have to supervise production. What about this one? The cat has to be at home all the time. The cat doesn't, doesn't has, uh -uh. the cat doesn't have to be at home all the time. And that is how we form the negative for have to and has to, to talk about obligations. So thank you so much for listening to me. And I hope this explanation uh, probably can help you to improve. Remember, we learn every day and we improve with every practice. So please continue working hard. And remember, in learning a language, your best friend is the practice. The more you practice, the better you are. So continue practicing and continue doing your best. Thank you so much.